Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. Okay, those of you who are men who are watching this, those of you who are women who are watching this, women, what does it feel like to be a woman? Guys, what does it feel like to be a man? Flip it around and say, men, do you have any idea what it feels like to be a woman? And women, do you have any idea what it feels like to be a man? No, the reality is, of course, we don't. We have no idea what it feels like to be a member of the opposite sex. All we have, all we have, this is crazy, all we have is gender stereotypes. Here's what I mean. There are stories about, you know, here's a young boy and his parents say, well, you know, we're treating him like a girl. He really is a girl because he identifies as a girl. Why? Well, you know, ever since he was little, we didn't have to tell him he liked dolls more than like truck, more than he liked trucks. He liked um, uh, dresses more than he liked jeans. He liked pink more than he liked blue. And you think of that, wait a second, that's how you know that your little boy is actually a girl? Because he just happens to like things that are traditionally associated with girls? It's just something that's arbitrary. Skirts, that women wear skirts is arbitrary. That women play with dolls or over trucks is arbitrary. In fact, I think about this. My, one of my older sisters, growing up, she was what you would call back in the day, since I'm old man, what they call back in the day, they called her a tomboy. Why? Because she loved hunting, she loved fishing, she, loved, she was incredible at sports. The field, the medic, the, she's a medicine, uh, in medicine right now, she's a doctor. Her, the field that she's in right now is, is a field traditionally associated, dominated by men. Her husband is a stay-at-home dad. Now, she is hard charging, she does a lot of, she takes, uh, she's really smart, she, she takes the bull by the horns, all these kinds of things. Things that are masculine traits. Now, wait, is she a, is she a man? No, why? Because she's a woman. She's the mom of her kids. My brother-in-law, He's patient, he's kind, he's gentle with his kids, stay-at-home dad. Traditionally, things associated with women. How do we know he's not a woman? Well, because he looks at his body, his body reveals that he's actually, actually a man. Here's the crazy thing, is if my perception doesn't match up with reality, it's not reality that has to change, it's my perception of reality that has to change. We all know this when it comes to, I'm sure some of you have this experience of people in your life who have suffered from something like another kind of body dysmorphia something like anorexia. There's a young woman that I remember working with years ago. It was painful. She was in the hospital because she was so thin. She was 98 pounds. But she still perceived herself as being fat. Say, no, I still feel fat. I still feel fat. Like, wait a second. But your perception and reality is off. So it's not reality that has to change. It's your perception of reality that has to change. That's an act of love. In fact, there's this other version of body dysmorphia, this kind of misperception of, of one's body. It's called BIID. It stands for Body Integrity Identity Disorder. And what BIID is, is it's when someone looks at like saying something like their hand and says, this isn't my hand. This is, it feels foreign to me or these legs feel foreign to me. In fact, there was a documentary I watched a number of years ago about a woman who she perceived herself to be a paraplegic. She perceived herself that her legs didn't work. And so that's how she lived her life. She got around in a wheelchair. She transferred herself from her bed to a wheelchair with like a, you know, a pulley system kind of a thing. But the reality is her legs do work. Her perception was off. And so what happens is this. When someone's suffering from this kind of body dysmorphia, by BIID comes in and says, doctor, this is not my hand. It's not my real hand. Can you amputate it? Doctors around the world are instructed, no, that's actually their hands. Don't amputate a healthy limb. The percep their perception is wrong, not the reality. But when it comes to sex, we all lose our brains and we all lose our minds. And a man goes in or a woman goes in and says, Doctor, these external genitalia are not mine. They're not actually a part of me. I perceive that they shouldn't be here. And apparently we're okay with doctors saying, okay, well then we have sex reassignment surgery or gender reassignment surgery. And yet that seems to be kind of covering over the real problem, just like amputating a healthy limb will be covering over the real problem. In fact, that's the conclusion that a guy named Dr. Hen Dr. Paul McHugh came to. He was the chief psychiatrist of Johns Hopkins Hospital. So this isn't like a, a crackpot doctor. This is the chief psychiatrist, ex-chief psychiatrist of Johns Hopkins. He dealt with a lot of these cases of people who identified as transgender. They saw themselves as a member of the opposite sex. And with sex reassignment surgery, he said, yes, yeah, some of these patients experienced satis a satisfaction of that reassignment, but they were still disturbed. They were still hurting. And he came to this conclusion. He said, we had to stop doing sex reassignment surgery because he says, we found that, um, he found that producing satisfied, but a still troubled patient seemed an inadequate reason for surgically amputating normal organs. Because I could change these external factors, but the reality is at the heart of everything, I'm still a man or I'm still a woman. 
And when it comes down to it, is that's, that's, that's the message of love. This is not a message of judging. This is not a message of, of criticizing. This is not even a, a message of trying to blame anyone or make them a monster. No, absolutely not. These are people who are hurting anyone the people in my life who have been hurting from anorexia or any kind of the kind of body dysmorphia or even this kind of sense of identifying with members of the opposite gender, all of that comes down to someone who's hurting. So what are we called to do as Catholics? Well, we don't have to judge because no one's calling us a judge and no one wants us to judge. We don't need to judge. What we're called to do is called to walk with people. I mean, that's the, one of the best things we do as Catholics is we walk with people. We listen to them. We hear what they're really saying. And then we're able to just not have to yell at anyone and not have to criticize anyone. Just be able to say, let me walk with you. I don't have to give you what you want in order to love you, but I am called to walk with you in order to love you. That's why it's easy for me to say this on a video, to say, like, here, we're called to do this. But what really happens is this. When Catholics, when those who belong to Jesus are willing to get into the messiness of someone's, you know, someone's brokenness, someone's wound, it doesn't matter what it is, listen to them, to love them and walk with them, that's what we're really called to do. And when it comes to Bruce Jenner, when it comes to anyone else, when it comes to any the people in your life and in my life, the best thing we can do is not simply share the truth with them, but it's also to walk with them. So who's God calling you to walk with today? It doesn't have to be with regard to this kind of stuff. It can be with regard to anything. Who's the broken person in your life? Broken doesn't mean wrecked, doesn't mean ruined, doesn't mean bad, just means wounded. Who's the wounded person in your life that God's calling you to listen to to love, and to walk with today. From all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. <music>